What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we just finished our Monday Night Raw live stream reaction. Shout out to everyone that joined us on YouTube and Twitch. We always have a great time when y'all show up for the live streams. We got to talk about what happened on this episode of Raw. And I did enjoy this overall episode. It was some, some good things that happened. Some storylines are being pushed and furthered along, or furthered along. And the crash out season is in full effect. There was multiple crash outs on this show, and I love it every time. So we're going to talk about some of what happened on this show. So they started off the show with Rhea Ripley coming out there. Huge mommy chance. She's obviously hella over in WWE, as she has been for a while now. But now she is officially a babyface in this sense. And she came out there cutting a promo. Basically, you know, really uh, processing what happened a few weeks ago at SummerSlam. And... There was one line she said that obviously uh, a lot of people are talking about on social media is the line of, she said, Dom, you stabbed me in the back. But the thing is, and you've probably heard this before, it just wasn't, you, you know, it just wasn't deep enough. Insinuating my man ain't got enough to please. And I was like, ah, oh, damn, that's, that's cold blooded, man. That's how you know. A woman is over. When she start hitting you with the, you just didn't have enough, uh, it's, it's GG. So now you know it's official. She she want, she want don't like Dominic at all. Then uh, Liv and Dominic interrupt, uh, interrupt Rhea in the ring. They were in the crowd with the people. And when I say the boos were tremendous, they were booing the hell out of Dominic. Rhea wants them to come down there. Uh, she, you know, they weren't trying to come down there. And Dominic essentially says, you know what? You want to know why I chose Liv? Because Liv doesn't uh, treat me like I'm less than. Liv treats me like a man. She lets me eat tendies whenever I want. She lets me play video games. And she treats me like a man. She doesn't make me call her mommy what grown man calls another woman mommy she calls me daddy which is very ironic because he was willingly calling her mommy but okay okay cool and she did one thing you couldn't do she helped me beat uh my deadbeat dad in uh ray mysterio and at one point there was some chance of uh sloppy seconds uh, sloppy seconds chance and Liv shut that down she said you know what I did give Dominic sloppy seconds I give him sloppy seconds all the time and I'm just like crowd stop chanting that immediately I was like oh uh, okay all right thanks for letting us know <laughs> so um Rio was like you know what that's cool I'm proud of you I'm proud of you finally finally able to do things for yourself essentially you know be a man, you know, for yourself. You've, you, you know, finally was able to do that to prove that you're better than, uh, than, uh, your father. I, I was trying to get you to do it by yourself, but it don't matter because you won't relive long enough to even be able to do that. And of course they was like, oh, I don't, we, we don't know what you're talking about. You know, uh, Liv was like, I, I took everything from you. You're by yourself. You know, I, your family is thousands of miles away. Your family in the judgment day is gone. I took the championship from you, the women's championship from me. And I took your man, Dominic. There, you have nothing. And then Rhea was like, well, that's, that's fine. That's cool. You can say that. But what, but. One thing I did want is for y'all to keep talking so that way we can find you. So he can find you. And they were like, what are you talking about? And out come Damien Priest right behind them. They were stalling so Damien can figure out where they were in the arena. He found out where they were and start packing up Dominic. It was so great. Then, of course, uh, Liv jumped on Damien's back. But Damien's still packing up um dominic mysterio then Rhea comes up there to even up the odds chases off live in the back and then he's just beating down dominic all the way down to the ringside that's when carlito gets into the mix when they get inside the ring carlito gets into the mix and um 
he eventually is able to save Dominic, and then they have an impromptu match with Carlito versus Damian Priest. They come back from commercial break. They have their match. It was a really nothing match, but you knew the Judgment Day was going to get involved, and that's exactly what happened after the match was over, after Damian got the win. Uh, that's when uh, JD got involved, started attacking him, and then that's uh, also... When um when Finn Balor started getting it, tried to get his licks in. But then Rhea music hit, Rhea comes out there um and um tries to help out um uh, Damian Priest and they're able to get everybody away, everybody gets out the ring. And it's funny because it <laughs> as Rhea coming down the ramp, Carlito's like, oh, don't do it, man, just stop. <laughs> And he ends up getting, I think she ends up kicking him or hitting him. Just move out my fucking way. It was it was funny, man. That was, because obviously he can't do anything. <laughs> so he's just like, hey, please stop. And she like, just kicks him or something like that. Hits him or kicks him, moves him out the way. So as the Terra Twins are celebrating in the ring, Dominic tries to hit a sneak attack, jumps from the top rope, but Damian Preach catches him. And he's, you know, he's about to, He's about to choke slam him, but he's like, you know what? Nah, Rhea's like, give Dominic to me. So Rhea gets Dominic. She sets him up for the rip tie. He's about to get hit with it, but then he gets saved by Liv Morgan, and Liv Morgan saves him at the last moment. So last week, Dominic saved Liv. This week, Liv saved Dominic from catching a rip tie, and the Judgment Day menacingly walks back up the ramp. That was a pretty alt good opening segment. Definitely enjoyed that for sure. So next, we got to talk about um, the Randy Orton situation. Randy Orton uh, cut a promo out there, letting it be known that he he's going to go out there. Well, uh, he let it be known that this month uh, will be the anniversary of him winning his first ever World Heavyweight Championship. And he's going to win, win another one when they go to Bash and Berlin to face Gunther. Gunther comes out. And one thing I love about Gunther, he's not phased by anything or anybody. He always has that smug look and he's never flustered. He's the one heel that never has that shock look when someone says something about them. He's always had that smug smile because he just knows that he's better than everybody else. That is the one thing I love about his heel character. Because a lot of heels... You say something to them and they, oh, mm, oh, I can't believe you said that, which I don't have a problem with that. That's good. But with him, it does nothing anyone says phases him. He's just, just that smug smile. Like he knows he's better. And he comes out there and he's like, yeah, you're, you're a legend. You know, you've, you've done it all. You had an amazing career. But then he's like, but you've wasted it. You, you've squandered it. And that's the problem. You've squandered your gifts. And we don't need something, someone like you in the Gunther era. You don't belong here anymore. So now they're going back and forth. Randy letting them know, you must not know who I am. You must have forgot who the fuck I am. Like, I'm Randy Orton, multi-time world champion. You, you must really forgot who I am. And that's okay, because I'm going to remind you very soon who exactly I am. And then this is when Gunther does what Gunther does best. He gets under your skin with the disrespect. He's like, you're a failure. Just like your grandfather was a failure. You know, your grandfather was a failure. Then your dad was a failure. And things started to heat up, and you're a failure as well. Randy Orton threw down the mic. Because he's like, you know what? I'm going to have to show you better than I tell you. They're in each other's faces, you know, real close, talking trash. And that's when Drew music hit. Drew comes out there. Because Drew earlier in the show was like, how does Randy get to skip ahead or whatnot and now challenge for Gunther for the World Heavyweight Championship? Fine, I'm going to insert myself into this. I'm going to make things right. Drew comes out there and he's, it looks like he's about to get in the ring. And Gunther turns around, and he made a crucial mistake because when he turned around, he got hit with an RKO for his troubles. It was beautiful. So after 
Gunther got hit with the RKO. Um, Drew takes off his shirt. He takes off his shirt. He's about to get in the ring. And that's when CM Punk comes from out of nowhere and attacks Drew McIntyre. He's punching him. They going at it. Drew throws him into the steel steps. And then he takes off his belt. He's about to whip him. But uh, CM Punk moves out the way. Struggle. He gets the belt. And he proceeds to beat the living crap out of Drew McIntyre with his own leather belt. I mean, whipping him like a government mule, like JR used to say. Beautiful sight to see. Had Drew out running like a track star out there. And there's a, a picture on social media on Drew's account. His back is covered in welts, and it's deserving. It was great. Great to see that. So, after that amazing segment, we come back to... CM Punk uh, in the back. You see Gunther storming off in the back because he got got. And then you see CM Punk talking to a uh, backstage correspondent. And she was like, well, Adam Pearce said you wasn't going to make it. But I was on a flight with you. I, you know, I was sitting next to you. So what happened? He's like, well, I told a lie. Because I knew if I would have came up here or announced I was coming up here, Drew wasn't going to be here. So I told a lie to get Drew to think he was safe. And he's not safe. And he still has seen he still had Drew's belt. And he's like, you know what? He always keeps running away from me. I think I know what I need to do to make sure that don't happen. And he looked at the belt. I was like, oh, we're getting a strap match. We're getting a strap match at Bash in Berlin. That way, Drew can't run. And I can't wait. Oh my God. This is gonna be so good. Gonna be so good, can't wait. We're gonna get some form of a strap match, or they're gonna be strapped to something where they can't move, they can't leave. I'm here for it. Let's go. It's gonna be a good one. So I can't wait for them to officially announce that at Bash in Berlin. Great segment. Love what they're doing with Randy Orton and Gunther. Love what they're do still doing with CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. So we got to talk about the Bronson Reed segment. Bronson Reed just. Added another victim to his uh, recent uh, attack. Last week, Seth Rollins got packed up, got destroyed. This week, we got another victim. So backstage, Bronson Reed was like, hey, I need you to find me an opponent or I'm going to find one for myself and I'm going to pack him up. So we cut to another segment where r trying to cheer up the Miz. So he's like, yeah, don't worry, Miz. I got you a match with Braun. He's like... You got me a match with Braun for the title? Wow. But wait a minute. Braun has a match with Sammy in the design. I was like, no, not Braun Breaker. Him, Bronson Reed. He fucking R-Truth went to Adam Pierce to get him a match with Bronson Reed. Oh, my. Oh, no. So you knew Miz was going to get packed up. And credit to what WWE did, they didn't have him immediately get squashed. They actually showed his, you know, accolades and how many titles he's won, you know, being a two-time, I believe he's a two-time Grand Slam champion, all this other stuff. I'm like, all right, cool. Trying to build him up. And it wasn't a squash. Um, it was a, a match that Bronson Reed actually had to fight through to win, but ultimately he ended up winning as we expected. So the Miz is out. The match is over. Bronson Reed wins. So Bronson's about to do what he did to Seth last week to the Miz. So he goes to the top rope. He's about to hit the tsunami. But R2 is like, no, don't do it. And tries to get Miz out the way. And R Truth catches the tsunami for his troubles. And then Bronson Reed goes up and does it again. And then Bronson Reed goes up and does it again. Officials and everybody's out there. Adam Pierce is out there trying to tell him, get down from there. You go back up there. I'm going to suspend you. All this other stuff. Looks like he's going to listen. Nope. Goes back up there. Squashes him again. The, they finally roll R-Truth's carcass to the other side of the ring. But it didn't matter because guess what? Bronson Reed goes up to the other turnbuckle, jumps off, hits him again. And Adam Pierce is fierce. He's pissed off. But once again, I'm like, bro, just suspend this nigga already. What are you doing? You're just letting your talent get killed out there. So as he's walking up the ramp with Bronson, the Texas crowd, the Austin, Texas crowd, you guys are all, <laughs> you guys are awful. Because they said one more time, they were chanting one more time. 
Guess what Bronson Reed does? He does it one more time, goes back to the ring and squashes R-Truth with another tsunami, essentially killing R-Truth as Adam Pierce looks just frustrated because Adam Pierce is not a good GM. <laughs> I love that he's not a good GM because we get more crash out moments like this. This was fun. And Bronson Reed is getting over with the tsunamis. And it's good to see that. He's getting over as a dominant, dangerous person. Love it. Chef's kiss. This is how you make someone dominant and make the fans care. The fans are caring about Bronson Reed. And that's awesome, man. So, rest in peace to our truth You'll be seeing uh, <laughs> Seth Rollins uh, at your local facility. <laughs> Y'all can bond over broken ribs. And also... The main event was really, really good. Two out of three falls for the Intercontinental Championship between Sammy and Braun Breaker. This is the, the grudge match or um, the tiebreaker match. They both have 1-1 one, one matches against each other. Both got wins over each other. And I did expect Braun to win, but this was really good. I love what they did here. This match was way better, way better than... The match they had at SummerSlam. This was a PLE level of quality match they had. Really, really good. I just wish the commercial breaks weren't so detrimental to the match. Because I felt like there was a few commercial breaks they could have avoided. Like, they... At one point, Sammy is trying to flip off the barricade. Bronson... Braun Breaker catches him. And I don't think I've seen this before. He catches him. And he runs to the opposite side where the timekeeper area is at. And he throws him like a fucking javelin dart into the timekeeper's area while carrying this man full speed running with him and throw him. And then they cut to the marshal. I was like, bro, what is this? I, I really wish they would have stayed with the action there. We're really, really good, though, overall. Um, I just wish less commercial breaks but it was a really great main event and the right person won right person won sammy went up to the top he was gonna uh go i guess maybe do a dive of some sorts and braun breaker hit him with a mid-air spear for the one two three pin victory and you heard all the dogs barking hoo, 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 and he's getting over too as well love what they're doing with braun breaker i think their feud is done now it's time to move on to something else the question is what are they going to move on to I personally, and I know they're probably going to wait on that, but right now, if I'm Adam Pierce and I'm the GM, you've had two guys to wreck shop to get what they want. How about you have these two guys wreck shop on each other? So Bronson Reed wants some, some good competition. Braun Breaker wants some good competition. Let the Bronson Reed versus Braun Breaker match for the IC title happen. Fuck it. Since you can't control them, let them destroy each other. That's how I would book it if I was Adam Pierce. Like, you know what? You guys are unhinged. I'm going to let y'all destroy each other. We're going to see who's really the beast, who's the best guy on Monday Night Raw. And I would let them destroy each other. So, man, overall, this was a pretty solid Monday Night Raw. Started off hot, kind of faltered a little bit, but de definitely picked back up. Love what they're doing on Monday Night Raw. It's pretty good, solid show. Definitely enjoyed it. So, comment down below. Let me know your favorite parts of this episode of monday night raw and what are you guys looking forward to the most also before i get out of here they did make it official the terra twins will be going in a mixed tag match mixed tag match against uh dominic and Liv, which i figured was going to happen and uh that should be an interesting one to see how that plays as well i do see the terra twins winning because i wouldn't have them lose there i would actually have them win there to kind of get some momentum for bad blood but we can talk about that at a later time but just wanted to put that out there that is another match made official but yeah once again let me know what y'all uh was your favorite part of the show what was your least favorite part of the show and what you guys are looking forward to the most but i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see you next one peace